Hey everybody, as the uh, title on this box says, we are going to be repairing this Optima HD20 that I have apart here. Um, I acquired this, oh I don't know, a year or two ago. The uh, original power supply was uh, blown to pieces. And I tried troubleshooting and repairing it. Here's the uh, original power supply. There was this chip here had actually exploded. Uh, you can't see it, it's underneath, but it got burned pretty good. Also, the uh, what ended up being a problem is I had an open winding in the transformer. But this power supply is no good. Uh, the transformer was bad. Once the transformer's bad, I'm not gonna bother with the rest of it. So now it's just a parts scrap piece. <clears throat> It'll be good for the, uh, well, that's no good. The uh, fuse is actually good. I'm surprised. I kind of thought that fuse would have blown up when the rest of this blew up. But um, I guess not. It's been, I don't know, well over a year since I looked at this last. But I finally found a source for a replacement power supply. So I ordered it up and it uh, showed up yesterday. So let's take a look at it and then we'll see about getting it installed. Got that cool yellow from China tape on it. So, you know, something cool is inside. Sorry, bubble wrap. And then the second bubble wrap packed well. So there's the good power supply. You can see I took the heat sink off the other one just so I could work on it a little better. Transformer, that's what was really wrong with the other one. Just trying to see if I had any of the uh, other parts, but I guess not. I guess they got cooked too thoroughly. So this comes ready to go. I do have to plug a few things in. We're going to need the uh, low voltage. Plug that in. The uh, thermal fuse. It goes here. And then we'll have the uh, door switch, which plugs in there, and then the power to the ballast, which plugs in there. You can have the specs on it. It's kind of nice. I don't know if you guys can read that, but. 12.25 volts at 4 amps, 5 volts at a half amp, and 385 volts at 0.7 amps. So that's a decent amount of power. We'll take the, the uh, plastic insulation bit here, and then we're going to set the power supply into it before we drop it into the projector. This insulates the bottom from that metal chassis. I'm just going to pull a couple of these wires out of the way. And let's give it a little, a little push. It, uh, it's a little tricky getting these in. But you need to just kind of Gently work it and make sure your wires aren't getting caught on things. There we are. Holes are all lined up. It's our ground wire is going to go there. All right, let's get some screws. All right, one. Turn that clutch down.
Okay. So power supply is installed. We're good to go. Thanks for watching. Oh, wait, no, we're not done yet. That was an attempt at humor. All right, I made a little mistake. Not a big one. But the uh, outlet in the back, the plug for the power cord, needs to have that installed. Holds it tight into place. So, see if I can get it in without taking everything apart. Rather not. It's close. There we go. It's a little cheating, but it worked. That's the wrong screw. All right. Feels good. Looks good. All right. Now let's move on. Next thing to reinstall is the optic assembly right here. Before I install that, though, I am going to give the color wheel just a little bit of attention. It's pretty clean, but it's been sitting for, like I said, for about a year or so, or more than a year. So I'm going to use a chamois pad and this Kim wipe to just kind of roll the wheel. See? what it should look like. That's what we're getting off it. And I'm not pushing down. I'm just letting the chamois ride on it. There we go. I like it. All right, so that's down. And this. Oh, where did this go? This went up here, I think. No. Oh man. Down there? Crap. <laughs> okay. Oh, I remember. <laughs> that goes over here. Alright. Say it's been a little bit. It's a little embarrassing. First things first, let's get that screwed back down. So you don't necessarily have to take oh. You don't I guess you do have to take it out. And I forget taking this thing apart. So, the ground screw has to go on first because the heat sink covers it up. these really small screws. Now depending on yours you may or may not have the, uh, the Loctite on it, the blue Loctite. Probably will. Two. There's four of these because there is a hole right there and then there's one right there. Alright, so let's 
spin that around. Let's tuck the color wheel wire out of the way. This, this went down here. Get it straight. There we are. That goes there. It helps direct air, I guess, into the fan. Man, I got such a headache today. It's a little warm in this part of the uh, United States. And the air conditioning's not working as well as I would like. So, I got a headache. There we go. That goes there, that goes there. Tuck that out of the way so that'll plug in easy. So that's, that means let's plug the rest of this power supply stuff in. So, low voltage to the main board. That should be the only underneath connection we need to worry about. Otherwise, there's nothing else on the bottom. Get this straight. front connector to the uh, DLP board lines up. So I'll push that down. Mm. And blower fan. Let's see, front IR. sensor or photo board as they call it all right and then blue up blue portion up the connections are on the bottom Tuck that down too. Looking good so far. And then we have the lamp driver. Pardon me. And then the system fan. And that should really do it. Now, let's put a couple screws in just to hold this stuff down. Let's see, because this is going to have to go on once it's all finished. And I'm not going to put them in all the way. I'm just going to run them in most of the way so that, you know, we can move stuff around a little in case... Okay, so that is a different thread.
then for whatever reason they have these teeny tiny ones seems a little unusual I don't know why you would I don't know a design reason for using different kinds of screws when you really could get away with the same kind of screw. Not even get away, it just seems like it might even be better. Now we can snug them all down. All right, so they are all in. We are almost at the point to where we can try it. I do have the keyboard removed. We'll have to put that back in the upper case before it goes back together, but for testing, it's just easier with it out. thing we definitely need is Mr. Lamp. Move Uncle Keyboard out of the way and let's put Mr. Lamp back in. And this is using an Osram 200 watt E20.8. You can see this has that special, not special, but correct lens. See that red there? That means it filters the infrared light properly so that the color wheel doesn't get flooded by IR. Ah. All right, let's just set her down. There we go. Pins line up. Snug down those screws. And put the door back on. I may end up doing a color wheel on this at some point. I don't think this has ever had its color wheel replaced. It's probably the original. First things first, let's get ready to fire it up. Let's plug in the keyboard. Then we'll get some power to it. Now this is, um, you can see it's insulated on the back, so I can safely leave it sitting there without shorting out. All right, so power cord. Let's get it so you can see the keyboard. We should get some standby lights. Hopefully no explosions. Nope, no explosions. We have our standby power LED. I'm gonna press the power button. And once I press the power button, we should see the color wheel spin up. There we go. And then we'll see some light. And then we'll have a picture. And uh, then I'll show you what that looks like. So, power. This is where we figure out what I forgot to plug in. Which hopefully is nothing. But so far, so good. Let's see, menu. I get a little. There we go. Wow, looking good. All right.
So let's turn it off and put the uh, top on and then we'll run some video through it. So power off. Cooling fan is running. plugger and let's get this put back in and then I'm going to look into repairing the uh, that and that but let's put this back in first good it's in position and the screws holding this are uh, Phillips screws but they have flat they have flat heads, you know, flat shape wise, see? They're not rounded. They're not uh, slotted screws and that sort of flat head. I guess it's so they clear or don't protrude. Gives them clearance. Every time I hear the word clearance, I think of, uh, I think it was airplane. Clearance, clearance, something like that. All right, so those are back in. You get a paper towel and I'll wipe this down and maybe see if I can get that off. All right, let's see if isopropyl does it. Sure does. Anhydrous isopropyl. I don't know if that was tape goo or paint or what. Looks like whatever this stuff was. Sharpie maybe? I don't remember the uh, history of this projector. I know I acquired it. It was given to me. I think somebody was going to throw it out. They had bought a house, upgraded their home theater system, and this was in there, and they didn't... They wanted something that was uh, 1080, I think. So I think this is only 720. I forget. I think it's native 720, and maybe it'll scale 1080. Of course, I'm pulling all this out of... out of where the sun don't shine, because I just don't remember. But um, I'll put a link to uh, Projector Central about this so you can read about its specs and see where I was wrong. There we go. All right. Much more clean. I like it. So, to fix those, let's see which one has the plastic. This one still has some plastic on it. That's the broken side. Nah, I don't think it's that one. I think it's this one. Is this one? There's a little. Oh, there's that little line. Seems to correspond. Oops, with that line. So let's see if that is indeed the case. Yep. 
and that one goes there. So when I went and fixed these, I uh, put some glue and then some shrink tubing on it. Holds that one in place. This one, the plastic was too far gone to use the shrink tube method. So instead I'm going to take a little chance and I heated it with an iron and pushed it into this plastic and kept it straight so that hopefully I'll get enough of the screw to grab to hold it. Now with the way the clips are set up, this will actually stay on even with just that one screw on the other side. But, you know, I'm going to try and get it as good as it possibly can be because, you know, it's a good projector. So let's see what happens. Drag it over. Let's see. Pardon me, there's our screws. It's just. Yeah, alright, good. So, you take the lid and let's make sure the keyboard connector is unlocked. Let's set the wire in. Then we're gonna get this area back in first. There we are. And let's see what happens. Do the good one first. I'm going to put these in by hand so that it's a little less chance of stripping them out. Alright, that's the good one. This is the glue and shrink tube one. Oh, and it's grabbing. And then, lastly, is the melted one. Like I said, I'm hoping the screw is long enough. I feel like I pulled it out. It's in there, but it's not great. I pulled it out. It's fine. That just means I'm going to try it again, and this time I'll just melt it in all the way instead of halfway. I'll show you. Yep, I can feel it as it comes off. Oh. I didn't. Maybe I just didn't. Maybe it wasn't grabbing. Or maybe it wasn't. Maybe it didn't reach. Let's see how far that sticks up. I feel like that should reach. Let's try it again. In fact, we'll put that one in first. So let's. Reconnect the keyboard. I expected to see that insert pulled out. And the fact that it's not is good. Alright, there we go. that one in and let's 
try this one again. I, mean, I can see the threads. <laughs> it worked. I grabbed it and it snugged it in. I could feel it pulling the, the front in as I tightened it. So this is great. And then, can't forget this guy. It snaps onto those little nubs. See the, uh, that thing. So, let's see. Oh, you know what I didn't do? Oops. Can I? Nope. The, uh, I didn't get my focus ring lined up. Let's undo this. fell out. All right, let's redo it. All right, I'm going to go melt that in all the way. And then we'll do it again. All right, I will be right back. And I'm back. This time I just went and melted it all the way in. We'll see if uh, I can get the screw to grab. If not, I can check through my screw bin. I'm sure I have a, uh, I think that's a three millimeter. I'm sure I have an M3. It's a little longer around somewhere. There we go. So I'm still not sure what I'm gonna do with this projector. It's, uh, I don't need it, but you know, it's an HD 20, it's a good projector. And now we will do the thing I forgot to do, which was get the uh, zoom, that thing lined up down. Uh, you can't quite see it, but here we get a flashlight. That guy right there, right? Right there, that thing. That's so you can move the zoom, or move the, uh, yeah, zoom and focus ring. Ah, I'm sorry, the focus is this part. Zoom is that part. And let's try it again. Let's put those screws back in. And we'll start with the good one. go to this one and see how that does. Let's see. Wow. It grabbed. I didn't tighten it, tighten it. I put it in until it stopped and then tightened it just a teeny bit more. missing. Uh, it's not one, it's the other, am I right? What's going on here? Did I lose that one? I did. Oh well. Take that one out. Where 
Where did I lose that? Right there. Oh, it's that glue didn't hold. All right, well, I'm going to go do the same thing and just melt this feller into place. Okay, hopefully the last time. Melted that in. All right, so I'm going to try something. I didn't have enough plastic left on either of these to really do my glue and shrink tube method. So being that these screws are kind of long, hoping that by melting those in, I'll still have enough screw to grab enough thread. Let's see, let's get that plugged in. It's holy, the air conditioning is not working right today here. I know they're gonna get it fixed, but it's hot out right now, which means it's hot in here. Oops, missed that again. All right, we got our zoom ring in place. Top is ready for screws. So let's see, first screw. Do this one. Um, all right. Second screw. This was the only side that didn't break. Is that corner? And then the third screw is this back corner, and I just hope this is long enough. And if not, I'm going to look and see if I can find a longer screw. But that is doing it. All right. So I got all three in. That's good. Now we just have to put the uh, focus ring back on. And that just presses on those little hooks right there. Catch on those guys. So let's see. What's the best way to do this? Hold it up so you can see it. up one and the other two will pop right in let's make sure all that snapped in which it is let's go around and give these guys just a little just a little more I don't want to pull these inserts out again I can overdo it I think that'll be fine yeah I like it now, not that I'm going to be using the lens cap, but until this goes into operation, I'm going to leave it on here. Yep. All right. So, now it's ready for real testing. All right. So, signal's connected. Let's get power connected. Let's fire it up. There we go. Obviously this was ceiling mount last time. So let's actually, let's do a, let's do a full reset. Current, all, enter. There we go. Now we have a flat Good. All right. Now, granted, this video isn't the best for testing. It's in that weird blue-green filter, but just so you know, I can see all the uh, all the stuff I need to see. I don't think this has a test pattern. It does. Awesome. Let's check the test pattern. There's the grid. There's white. Oh, what's that? Some 
crowd on the lens, probably. Yep, there's a little smudge of something in that lens. Nah, it's on the inside. No worries, I'll take care of that. I'm sure it's something on the inside of the DLP, but that's not for this video. I will do a uh, cleaning video on this projector at some point. Let's just get our picture back together here. There we go. And really that might not even be obvious most of the time, but I'll still clean that out. So anyway, um, that is how you install the power supply in an Optima HD20. If you have any questions, you uh, know where to put them. And if you don't subscribe, hit that subscribe button, be cool. Um, you don't have to, but if I don't remind you, you might not do it ever. So aside from that, thank you for watching.